Hi there, marketing is for sure the hottest industry to apply AI, with tons of opportunities to increase revenue and provide a better experience to your customer. Join us on this video to discover 11 AI applications in marketing. Hi there, I'm Calvin Fernandez, co-founder and CEO of Newly AI, and welcome to another AI shot where we will discover 11 applications of AI in marketing. So first of all, why marketing? Or what I say marketing is the hottest industry for to apply AI because each and every company has a marketing and sales department. Regardless of how large you are, how, how small you are, regardless of whether you are a startup or, or a big corporation, you need to do marketing and you have to do sales. That's the reality. And it's quite you know, inefficient to do sales and optimize experience manually for each and every customer. So AI has a lot of potential out there to increase revenue from your customers and second, to optimize their experience, to personalize their experience, okay? So that is why mainly you have all of these applications of marketing in AI. We will go over 11 of them and I hope uh, you like this video and you, and you enjoy it and start figuring out how to apply AI in your own marketing and your own sales funnel, okay? So let's go, let's go for it. So as I said, we want to increase revenue and we want to personalize experience. So in any AI use case, so if you, if, if you think about how they differentiate from each other in the AI application, you have basically three categories here. So you have first the before having a name, okay? So the, all the use cases of before having a name. What do I mean by before having a name? A name, before knowing who is your customer, okay? Before having an identifier, a name, an email, a, a phone number, okay? Before you, before you have an identity associated to each person. Then you have the, after you have a name, of course, after having a name. Here, it doesn't mean you have a contract, you just have an identity. So here you mainly have the before contract, where they are just leads and you have the in contract, okay? And then you have after they leave, okay? So end of contract. Okay, and basically all the 11 use cases that we will study today are in each in one of these three categories. Okay, so let's start with before having a name. Before having a name, we basically have what we call uh, marketing mix models. Okay, marketing mix models. The goal of marketing mix models is basically understanding what is the, the, the profit you get from each campaign you run. So how can you understand what is the value that each at each marketing channel is bringing you? Let's say you have TV, then you have, you know, outdoors, then you have social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. You are spending this amount of value from each from each one of these channels. How much value are you getting in return? Which is kind of one of the, you know, most difficult problems to solve as a marketeer. You know, you know, like every marketeer spends like throws away half of the of their budget they just don't know which half is is that half so this is a very challenging problem to solve and the good news is that there are already some machine learning models out there to tackle this challenge you are invited to to reach to research more about it marketing mix models is the name then you have a name okay then you have an identifier the, the user submits a certain form the person actually becomes like a person and not just an statistic okay so what happens after you have a, a name? The first thing that you want to do is basically closing this middle point here, which is before contract and after contract, and that you do it by actually lead scoring. So knowing if it is worth to spend some, your resources on this lead, if it will convert or not, and conversion. So how can I convert this lead? What is the best commercial offer I can do to convert this lead, okay? Now let's say the custom the, the lead already purchased my product, already subscribed to my to my product, etc. What can I do here? So here you have like two trends. One trend is more value oriented, the second trend is more you know experience oriented. Let's start with value. Okay? On the value case, you have mainly upselling, okay? 
which is basically how can I get more value out of this customer, you have cross-selling, and then you have understanding your customer lifetime value, okay? The first two are more, you know, proactive and, you know, are promoting things. The third one is more to understand where is your customer out there. So what is upselling? Basically, upselling is all these strategies to get more value out of your, out of your customer, sending higher tiers of the same product. Cross-selling is selling across the different verticals of products you may have. How can I can support you on this journey? Basically, by telling you which customers are more likely to be upsell or cross-sell and what offers can you make them, okay? What kind of product they are expecting from you. In the customer lifetime value case, is more, you know, um, a diagnosis more than a treatment. So it's mainly about understanding what is the future of this client, how long will he be with us, how much value they, he, they will bring on the future, so you can then decide a lot of potential things about them. So I told you there is value and then there is experience. On the experience side, you have, for example, sending them recommendations. Okay, recommender systems, I will put here, which is basically recommending them product. Not necessarily because you want to get more value out of your customers, not necessarily because you want them to buy something, sometimes just because you want to engage them more with your product. Let's look at, for example, the case of Netflix. Netflix is doing recommendations of new series, not because they are, you know, getting a, a dollar amount out of each recommendation, but because they want to keep you engaged with their product. So that is why I put recommenders recommendations here as more as an experience thing while upselling is more on the value thing okay so we have recommender systems then of course we have something that is not necessarily associated with marketing at first glance but it is which is quality of service so basically understanding what is the kind of level of satisfaction the kind of experience you are providing to this customer if you are fulfilling your promise or not and although it's a more technical issue is typically tied with marketing, CRM, sales strategies, okay? So you want to keep this inside your marketing team, most likely, if you are executing this type of, of use case, okay? Then you have all the support, okay? For example, um, who is the best person to talk with this with this guy to solve this problem? For example, this customer is having a complaint, how can I, who should manage this, or what is the complaint, understanding the complaint? So all those millions of use cases of applications you could have about how to provide a better support uh, is here on, on the support area. Again, it's more about the experience than about the value you get out of out of your customer. And again, sometimes some companies have this apart, but in general, you know, marketing needs to, needs to have a good view of everything that happens with the customer and customer support is, is part of it. So we have before having a name, now we have a name, we converted that customer, so we are in the middle of our customer journey, and then we are almost ending this part, but before ending this part, let's go for another set of use cases here, which is understanding my customer. Not necessarily, again, to get value, but to provide a better experience. You get here a lot of you know segmentation, customer satisfaction, you get predicting NPS score of your customer, you get, for example, profiling, what is the age group, gender, etc. All these attributes of your customer is typically something you want to do inside your marketing CRM department, okay? The, the, the main reason you want to understand your customer is to keep them satisfied, to improve their value, but also to prevent you from getting to this area, which is the end of contract part, okay? In the end of contract, basically, you have two main use cases, okay? The first one is voluntary churn voluntary churn i guess you know what is churn it's basically when the customer leaves when the customer close closes the contract and basically here ai can assist you by telling you who is most likely the next next churner oh, so who is more dissatisfied and will close the contract in the next month won't you know sub you won't renew their subscription etc and this is voluntary churn is I will say lead scoring, upselling, and voluntary share are like, the, are like the three top use cases we receive as requests from our clients, okay? Then you have involuntary share, okay? 
So what is involuntary churn? It's when it's not the client who leaves you, it's, it is you who leaves the client. Why? Because they are not paying. Why? Because they are you know, making you lose a lot of money because they are not complying with their side of the contract. So it is this part of closing the contract. So how can AI support you on involuntary churn? By telling you who is not going to pay and how and how can you optimize their donning process, your donning process, or so your how many months they will have to to pay their their current quota, you know, how many what is the down payment they will have, if you will downsell their their current contract so you prevent them from not paying, etc. So you either close the contract or they close it, and AI can support you here by identifying who is going to close and you know trying to save them. That is actually the main reason, not identifying who who is going to leave but how to save them. And involuntary churn, there is another use case here, which is churn attribution, okay? So what is churn attribution? And before I get into this, actually you have a PDF down in the description where I will show you my insights on each one of these use cases with the data you need and the kind of KPIs you, you want to measure, okay? So just click on the link below and download it. Well, churn attribution is basically a similar use case to another use case that you have here, which is a bonus. Okay, it's an extra one, which is multi-touch attribution. So you should have this one here as before having a name. And it's basically, you know, if I have three, four interactions with a lead before they converted and then they converted i want to know which you know which what is the impact of each one of these touch points on the on their conversion for example the clients they click on a youtube video okay and then they click on a linkedin ad and then they came to my website and they converted okay so what was the impact of each one of these touch points on their conversion. Well, sure, attribution is actually the same thing, but with the opposite uh, behavior, which is not buying, but uh, stop buying, right? So with churning. So if you had three touch points with your client, you know, like first customer support ticket, a second one, and a third one, a fourth one, what, what was the input of each touch point on making the client leave, okay? So this, is, this was a bonus for those of you that stay up to this point. Again, click on the link below to get more insights about each one of these use cases. But now let's move to uh, to another part, which is the three musketeers. I, I like to call it the three musketeers of any marketing use case in AI. Okay, so the three mus musketeers are the offer you make to the client, okay, the channel, where you communicate this offer and the time. So what are you offering? Where are you offering it? And when are you offering it? Okay. So any AI use case is basically answering one of these three things, or basically when you are thinking about AI optimizing any sales funnel, you are basically optimizing these three things. What I am offering, recommender systems, um, upselling, etc. The channel where I am communicating, SMS, email, outbound calls, etc. And the time, what is the best time for calling a customer, for sending an email, you know, for, so that we maximize open rates or the email, of the emails, etc. But, you know, as in the case of the three musketeers, it's not actually three, but four, okay? Because the offer is actually two things, okay? The first thing is the features that you offer them. So what is included in the product? What are the features, the attributes that you, that you are giving to the customer? Let's say a Netflix subscription with five accounts and you know, all these channels, or I don't know, this car with you know, this amount of horsepower and this color, and you know, basically the product you are offering. And then it's the value okay or the price component the contractual component so here we have actually four elements the features you're offering the value on the or the price the channel and the time are the four dimensions you want to optimize 
in any AI use case. Another thing that you have to be aware of is the time, the time span, the time window you are optimizing. You can, for example, optimize for what is called the next best offer, next best offer, or some people say next best action, depending on your tribe. Okay, you are either one of them, but it's actually the same thing. Uh, it's just offer is more limited to offer. Actions includes also experience, or if you are going for the long term. Okay. So next best offer, next best action is basically optimizing the next transaction in general. Some people say it's like the long term thing, but in general, you will see that the methodologies are for next best offer, next best action are basically for single transactions. Long term is basically, basically how can I optimize the long term value, the long term experience of this client? Of course, all of you will say, you know, I am on the long term. I don't want to get the most value out of the next call. I just want to get the best value out of the customer lifetime. Okay. I agree with you. However, unless you are building, you know, an amazing marketing platform based on AI. So if you are just a small company, if you are even a global company, but you know, AI is not your product, it's just something you're using to optimize. Most likely you want to stay here and you want to optimize one transaction at the time. Why? Right? Because the technologies to do this are way simpler. You know, it's like classification, regression, etc. For long term, you need to get into more complex stuff like reinforcement learning and other things. And most likely you don't have the technical expertise or you don't want to have the focus to get into, into, into these kind of things. If you want to, you know, discuss these use cases, you can always book a call with us. I will leave a link below on the description in case you want to, to discuss any about any of these ideas. How to find the best point to optimize, how to, to find the, the best, ne the next best use case, the next best application you need to solve. Well, just look at your customer journey and understand where are you failing them the most. Okay. So let's say it's here. What do I mean by failing them the most? Look at your conversion rates. Look at, look at your churn rates. Look at, you know, how much value are you getting from each stage of, of your customers? And basically taking this into account, look at the point where you are, you know, disappointing the most your customers, where you are um, less prone to fulfill your promise to them. And that's the top use case you need to solve. Is it conversion because you are, you know, offering a lot and you are not converting? Go for lead conversion. If it is, you know, they are not getting more and more engaged with you, go for engagement things like recommendations, like cost of quality of service, etc. Or let's say, you know, they just buy one product and they'll leave. Well, let, maybe let's go for selling or selling use cases. Or, you know, they leave all unsatisfied. So they all leave screaming bad things about me. Then try to go for either short attribution or, or for short probation. So look at the part where you are doing your, your worst job and use your AI to elevate this. Okay, that's, that's the main principle you have to you need to have on this on this journey okay so again if you like this video like subscribe and activate the notifications i will leave here another business video that you may want to watch if you if you are on the business side and here another one for the technical components of ai bye bye guys see you soon